Hi there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3. If you missed the last episode, go back and watch it. Like there was so much that was revealed, it's ridiculous. Starting off with George being like, I guess the leader of the gnomes and shooting Angelica, Crow not actually being dead. It was like a, I don't know, like a clone or a wax doll or something down inside the grave instead. Um, the Steel Maiden and the Lance Maiden are one and the same. The Stall Ritter and the Eisen Ritter, same thing, just kind of reincarnated. Musée's real name is Mildine, and she's now the Duchess of Cayenne. And, um, yeah, the old fat guy, he got kicked out. Gaius knows about Septarians and what happened in Crossbell. I mean, the whole thing is crazy. Let's talk about the Star Ritter, Inus, being a former Bracer, and Nea, she was a victim of the DG cult. Like, there's so much going on. There's a Phantasmal Blaze plan, and the Great Twilight plan, which is apparently the Gnome's plan, which has two different end goals. Um, the leader of the Witches, the leader of the Hexen clan, is frickin' Rose from Red Moon Rose, and knows Aryan Road. Like, it's crazy. Hugo's standing on this airship right here with the Thord students and all this. <sighs> oh, and Victor's the pilot. Lovely. We are now over the western part of the Isengard mountain range. Estimated arrival in Heimdall is 1410. Maintain current course and speed. Once we reach Ulster, adjust course to run parallel to the railroad. Aye, aye, Captain. You have my thanks, Your Grace. Your assistance this past week has been invaluable. Think nothing of it. This is the Crimson Wing's job, after all. I've no doubt your first bout of field exercises in North Ambria saw you even busier than I. It is I who should be thanking you for your hard work. To be honest, I'm having a difficult time deciding how to proceed as a teacher. <laughs> Perhaps that is a sign of General Craig's influence. I would advise you to follow your own convictions for the time being. That way, you may... Ah, instructor. There you are. Cadet Arner. Greetings, my lord. Seeing it up close, the Courageous is truly amazing. And though it was barely used during the Civil War, its main cannon is certainly impressive as well. Perhaps we should consider deploying a number of cruisers to match our fleet of battleships. Cadet. It is true that during an emergency, such power may prove beneficial. Learning when to use one's power and when to refrain is an important lesson. If that is the lesson your field exercises have taught you, then I'd say it is safe to declare them a success. Yes, of course. My thanks, Captain Arsade. I look forward to seeing you again. I wish you luck patrolling the Summer Festival alongside my older brother. Cedric just gives me the willies. Something about him. Like, he's so creepy. And he's talking about the Summer Festival. Hmm. Well, here we are in Heimdall, which is the capital of Erebonia. And if you forgot who Victor was, I don't know how you forgot who Victor was, but he's Laura's father. Nightheart is uh, apparently still teaching at Thor's University. He was a teacher there during uh, Cold Steel 1, and then he kind of joined the army and everything in uh, Cold Steel 2. So... Yeah. And I guess Oliver's going to be here in Heimdall too for the Summer Festival. And Cedric knows all about it. And I was just saying that, like, Cedric um, kind of fell off the face of the earth. He hasn't really bothered Reen anymore, but apparently he's going to be back to bother us even more. That's just lovely. Oh! Whoa! What in the hell? What are these, like, criminals or something running away and they just vanished? What's going on here? Damn it! How many times have they slipped away like that now? 
There's no end to it! We need help from the Intelligence Division or the RMP. Man, it'd be nice if all we had to deal with are those half-wits. But we can't afford to let our guard down. Spread out and lay low until the appointed time. Be sure you've got your Ramdas ready to use. Roger. Recommencing mission. Red flowers? I don't think so. <sighs> There's no end to them. The eyes which served as the vessel for the bringer of miracles. But when the flame consumed the mirage, the fairy tale became that of the Empire. So as a professional, how do you intend to intervene? Ho oh, ho! Was I that obvious? To be perfectly honest, I'm having a bit of trouble finding a lead. I was hoping we could work together as friends and colleagues and have ourselves a little information exchange. I could even help you bury the hatchet with the elder of your clan, perhaps? <laughs> That's right. You have an agreement with her, don't you? Well, I'll consider your offer. However, I ask that you play nice from now on, Mr. Former History Instructor. Or should I say, Second Dominion, Thomas Lysander the Partitioner? Thomas changed his hair color. It used to be like purple, and now it's like a maroon. I actually kind of like the maroon hair. The glasses still look kind of ridiculous, though. But yeah, Thomas is part of the Gauls Ritter, along with Kevin, Ein Selnit, who is, by the way, Toval's girlfriend if you didn't catch that last time i think i want to say campanella brought it up i'm pretty sure whenever they were fighting together um the ramda that must be what made them vanish and i imagine that's similar to like an arcus unit so i don't know what that thing is um how those criminals got a hold of it Apparently azure flowers are now blooming where the sun doesn't even shine underground in concrete Okay, I guess they could just bloom everywhere. But yeah, we got to see Vita. So she seems to be on our side getting rid of uh, the Azure Flowers and the Cryptids and everything. So that's good. At least we don't have another enemy. Oh, here we have the um, King and the Queen. wonder what they're up to. I would not have expected that Oliver would be missing the party like this. It is unfortunate, yet understandable, given the current situation. With the Crimson Wings safeguarding Heimdall's skies, I'm sure the citizens will feel at ease. Yes, but I can't help but feel bad for him. I wonder if he's been upset over Cedric's actions of late. Hmm. <laughs> Oliver isn't the type to let that get to him. You should know this as well as I. No, you're right. He was only a young boy when he lost his mother and was adopted into the royal family. I would have understood if he hadn't accepted me, given his early life. But he gladly welcomed me as his stepmother and was truly happy when Alfin and Cedric were born. <laughs> yes, that is the virtue he possesses. It's easy to believe he has friends not simply across Erebonia, but the entire continent. Yes. However, recently, even though Cedric once looked up to his older brother, he... 
Pardon me, Your Highness. Chancellor Osborne would like an audience. Very well. Send him in. My apologies for interrupting, my liege. You as well, Lady Priscilla. No. <laughs> it's quite all right. I shall excuse myself now. She seems to have some worries about the Prince. It is to be expected, so long as she sees things differently from you. Understood. In any event, it seems things are beginning to line up with what was written in the records. Yes, though we set the timing for the Civil War ourselves. By this point, however, the ending is all but decided. But are you certain this is all right? Leaving everything in my hands? As I told you 14 years ago, if there truly is no other way to avoid this end, then I shall leave it all to you. It may place a great burden on my sons, but could not the same be said of you? Yes, my liege. Huh. Placing a great burden on my sons. That would be talking about, of course, Cedric and Oliver, but then he said, can't the same be said of you? Meaning that Osborne has sons. Plural. We know that Osborne was from Hamel. We know that Reen is Osborne's son. We know that Ash is from Hamel. Could Ash also be one of Osborne's sons? Hmm. And then they were talking about the Civil War and like planning the Civil War. We planned the Civil War. So they were both in this together. They wanted this to happen. And apparently they were also in on the Hamel incident because they talked about it and they said, you know, this is what happened 14 years ago. And I did some quick math and yeah, Hamel was 14 years ago. Ugh. I don't know. This is a uh... This is really getting up there with political intrigue here. Oh, like who? Okay. I actually like seeing Reese or uh, seeing Reen do his teaching and everything. I think it's kind of cute. Oh. Whenever I first got my degree, it was. Um, in history and social science education, um, I was certified six through 12, and I began teaching in 10th grade. Then I moved down to ninth grade, and then I was like, high school is not for me. Maybe middle school will be a little bit better. So I moved down to eighth grade. And damn, those kids were worse than the frickin' high schoolers. But then again, I was also 23 years old, and yeah, I didn't really know all that much. So. Instead, I decided to move down to elementary school, and because of that, I no longer taught just history, but I taught, you know, all subjects in elementary school. So, yeah, that's basically, uh, yeah, so I only really got to teach history for about three I, years. I have a question. Was that person you and the other instructors fought the real St. Leanne? Yeah, good question. Well, she did say that she was reincarnated. Without a doubt, she was tremendously strong, and that aura of hers certainly seemed real. But it's possible one of Ouroboros' members is just posing as her. Let's put that aside for now, though. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Don't gotta be stingy. <laughs> Don't gotta be stingy. <laughs> oh, Pablo, you're ridiculous. Okay. 
Oh, looks like we gotta take a uh, final exam or a midterm or something's happening here. Yeah, but just because you were a student doesn't mean that you'd be a good teacher. My first year teaching was horrible, but I got really good by the end of it. Do you ever quit, Muse? Like, do you ever stop? She is in, she's ridiculous. You know, come to think of it, like no one at the school has any teaching experience whatsoever. Everybody's like a first year teacher. I, it's kind of odd that way. Even the principal has no teaching experience whatsoever. They just like randomly threw some people together and like, sure, you guys can be teachers, whatever. Well, yeah, you just gotta study. That's what Japanese kids do. Oh, oh, okay, cool. Oh, I would like that, some healthy competition. Well, yeah, of course they should study. I think that Ash, l let me rank these kids. So Ash will get in first, followed by Kurt, followed by Altina, followed by probably Muse, and then probably Yuna in last place. Just for the fact that she's not exactly the smartest, and she's also not from Erebonia, she's from Crossbell, so she doesn't have that kind of background information there. But Ash is really smart. Kurt's up there in smartness too, and Altina has kind of like an eidetic memory going on. Muse seems really smart as well. I hope that all of you, though, beat Cedric. Well, oh, shithead. Oh, a little reward. Cool. Okay. No, I can't imagine there would be any kind of problems or anything. Oh, good. I would imagine that you guys should probably have the same questions as them because everybody's standards would be the same. You know, it's the same campus. They should all have the same standards, the same syllabuses, the same rubrics, etc. Oh, good. But if they've withdrawn, like, have they left the country? Or have they just moved over someplace else, like Heimdall? Yeah. Thanks, person with absolutely no teaching experience whatsoever. Thanks so much. I don't know. To me, he's still an asshole. Okay. It's pretty obvious where it is, Rain. The chapter's called Radiant Heimdall. Aren't you paying attention? I really like her boots. They're super cute. Leonora's boots. Okay. So yeah, well, we normally have like bonding points. Now we have study time points. It's the same thing. Yeah, they're working together now, right? Oh, to me, I think that the professor knows a lot more than he's letting on. Okay. Oh, some messages. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, lots of thank you messages. Oh, no problem, Elisa. Oh, a pinky ring. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to send you an engagement ring through the mail. Like, what are you talking about? You have to get down on one knee. Not that I would propose to you anyway, but whatever, Elisa. See what Sharon has to say. 
I forgot whatever gifts I gave to these people. I have no idea. Okay, so apparently we sent her some perfume. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's all that matters, that she likes it. What did we send him? Oh, that's right, the coffee grinder. Yeah, because he was talking about how he likes coffee instead of tea or something. If I were to propose to one of these people, I would choose either Eusis, because he's super hot, or Gaius. There's just something about Gaius that I just really like. Well, Ash is pretty hot too, but he's a bit young. Don't you think that's kind of weird to send somebody soap? It would be like, you know, here, use this soap because you reek. Like, to me, it's just kind of an odd gift to give someone. Yeah, I agree. You guys are in your 20s now. Come on. That's kind of creepy and gross. Oh, what do we send her? Oh, that's right, Eastern Tea. Oh, are they? You put the tea bag in the water and you throw it in the microwave. What's so hard about that? Yeah. Oh, that would be fun. So, what do you want, Major Michael? Go away. So, um, we have a lot of stuff to do right now, but what I'm going to do is do the uh, bonding events. We have three bonding events and five people that we can do them with, which are the members of Class 7. Um, so I'm going to be doing the bonding events based on who I have the least amount of Link experience with, which at this point is Unicurt and Muse. Um, I'll still be showing Ash's and Altina's bonding events, but I won't be actually keeping those bonding events. So look forward to that in today's end slate, and have a good day.